more detail about this mobile solution. So I will jump straight to it. Uh, but first, let's look at the agenda for today. Uh, today, after Christian presentation, we will, we will go to browser and downloadable clients. And then uh, you all will have an assignment one, but it's not actually an assignment. This is more like a practical exercise where you will uh, have your own uh, device and you will practice in it. And then we will go to SMS reporting. We will show you how to set it up, uh, send some tests, uh, SMS messages. Uh, and then Andreas will introduce something about mobile network background, some our experience and best practice about deploying this as mobile. And finally, you will have a group assignment number two where we will give you two assignments. Uh, okay, uh, because I'm a technical person, so I will try to, now I, what I'm going to do is I will try to sum up all of our solution. I will go to each of them. I will tell you what is the advantages and disadvantages of it. Uh, and then I will run a demo and then it's your turn to try it out. Uh, first of all, let's sum up who, we are, who are using the DSMS mobile now. Uh, first of all, we have the Punjab people in India. They are 6,000 hair workers, which currently using our J2ME application for sending the aggregate reporting. And this is have running for several years now. Uh, the second country is Zambia. Uh, they have 600 hair workers doing report for the malaria ram. And they are also using the J2ME, which are UGBRS as a transfer protocol. Uh, we have, uh, have trial in Malawi, in Himachal Pradesh, India, uh, several, several SMA projects in Uganda. For example, one that I have involved, this is the project that uh, fund by CDC, which they collect the piece of man from the village and send it to the lab. And during that process, someone had to send the message to notify for the previous person what is the state start of the businessman and uh, when it will be transferred to the next station. Okay, up. And also we have many other countries uh, rolling out. Okay, uh, let's get back to this diagram a little bit. Uh, so far, before the DSIS mobile, you have this area, the PC. We already have the, PC, uh, the, 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 the desktop application. Uh, jumping from Microsoft Access to a web based application is a big step, but it's not enough because you still have this area, smartphone, Java browser, and the SMS. So what we are trying to do, is we are trying to have the solution for all of the area here, uh, and we will not left anyone behind. Everyone will have the chance to involve into the SS2 environment. So the further we go to the right, the less capacity the device is. So that we have to make sure that we try our best to get uh, the, 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 the best that the device can offer. Uh, first of all, I will go to this area, smartphone area, where we have fancy device, touch screen, and everything. Okay. Uh, smartphone. Okay. Our first client in this area is a native Android client, which is support for you to do aggregate reporting. Single event, this one, it belongs to the tracker. Uh, so I will go detail about it uh, after the Monday section. And uh, you can change a little bit about your profile. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is that it has the offline capacity. It's very responsive because it's writing in the native Android code, so extremely responsive. In the touch screen, you click and it responds immediately. Uh, it can also catch information offline. That means that when you initialize the application, it will download all the metadata into your phone, store it there, and then the next time you don't have to connect again, or if you don't have to, if you don't have the internet connection, no problem. And the real data value that you 
are entering if you don't have the internet, no problem. You can just store it offline, and until the network get back again, you can send it. So that is the strain, uh, the, 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 the advantages of the, 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 the Android client. But uh, yeah, the disadvantage is that this is the Android client. So that if you have the iPhone or you have the Windows phone, you cannot install it. So no application, no, no solution is perfect. It's all about the choice, what they fix in what situation. The second solution we have in this area is the sm smartphone web application. Uh, basically, it's based on HTML5 technology. It has provide some nice features that normally you only can find in the native code. <coughs> uh, the good thing is that there's no installation, no configuration need. If you have the DSIS uh, 2 server up and running, then you got it for free. Uh, it can run on any smartphone browser. Here, it will break the barrier of platform. This is platform independence. If you have a window phone, you can use it. If you have iPhone or iPad, you can use it also. You can li completely throw away the platform dependence. Uh, it also provides for you, oh, sorry. It also provides for you the, the, the offline data store capacity thanks to the advance of uh, HTML5, which is uh, you also can find in the, uh, the desktop application. Uh, and finally, you have the touchscreen optimized user interface. I mean that uh, all the button there is big. Uh, you have big or button, big icon, everything is optimized for your touchscreen. Uh, this is the sum of the screenshot of the apl application. This is just some of it. I will go to the uh, uh, detail demonstration after it. So it provides for you very similar uh, features as uh, the Android, except it is XML5. Um, the big advantage is, it, if any, is that it still require a browser that supports HTML5. And uh, somehow the, the the offline capacity is not that is that good as the native Android client. Okay. So we finish with the first area with two, oh, oh sorry. We finished the first area with two solutions. Let's move to the less fancy area that uh, I label here as a the second area. Uh, when I talk about the second area, I mean the kind of phone, the very basic uh, Nokia Java phone. This is a fe feature phone, but you still have something. This is still support for you, uh, the JTME. It's still support for you, the, uh, the, the, the browser, a good browser, uh, so that you can install the J2ME application. And here we have two J2ME application, one for aggregate reporting and one for the tracker that I will talk about later. This is what you see here is J2ME aggregate reporting with support for you apply catching of forms, completely apply catching of forms. Uh, it can be reported using GPS or SMS as the transport method. Uh, it's a phone out mechanism that if you send the, uh, normally it will try to use GPS to send the report. If it phone out, it will pop up and show for you a pop up and say, we are unable to connect using GPS. I, do you really want to use SMS? You select yes, it will try to send SMS. It's very good for low current situation because of its of like capacity. And it's similar when handset pace is no. Uh, this is the advantages and also the disadvantage of this because as you know, J2M is, is the area where each of the manufacturers implement it by their own way. It means that it's not standardized at all. As, uh, all the manufacturer can claim that they support 
uh, JTME application, but that's not true. They support it by their own way. So that if you bring us a phone that, for example, a Chinese phone, we have to do a series of tests to make sure that uh, this can work properly. And some of the chi a Chinese phone, we even cannot find out the document to specification what is support and what is not support inside. So this is a bad phone process. Okay, this is the user interface by the screen short. You start with a login screen with your username and password. This is actual your username and password you use in the desktop uh, version. You start and then you, s you, you uh, go next with the bin code. Uh, we have to provide this bin code because if every time you use the, the, the application and we require why the username and password, it will be very painful. Yes, you have the question? Okay. Every time we require using a bus work, it will be painful to enter in because it can be long. So that when the second time you use the application, only this screen will appear and ask you to enter four digit bin code and then you go straight next. You can select the village or your organization unit. You select report form. You select the period and then you go into the form itself, and then you can just uh, here. Actually, this is the the screen that I'm talking about. Upload for will you want to SMS? Okay. The next one is tracker, but I'm not gonna talk about it today because you didn't go through the tracker section yet. Uh, okay. Uh, the third uh, solution in the feature phone area is the live web application. Uh, as I just talked about, sometimes you will have the feature phone uh, with, say, support uh, J2ME. But after we try it out, it is doesn't work properly because technical issue. So what should we do now? We will rely on the live web app. This is super simple, super live web interface for feature phone like this. They can browse it using Opera Minis that is already installed into the phone. And it's very nice. It's up for almost uh, all of the features of all of the uh, uh, above solution. Um, you have aggregate and tracking. You even can view the chart and report in this uh, interface. I said the seamless interface that you can find this is extremely flexible to upgrade and it's easier to support a wide range of handset because uh, this is these this application don't even use JavaScript so this is very very basic HTML code inside uh, it can help you to send and receive DHS messages but again, there's some track off because it's used basic technology, so there's no offline support. And uh, using the long form there can be cause some trouble because as your handset already have the constraint of the hardware capacity. So if you run very long form over there, it can be very slow and not very efficient. And this is the screenshot. You start with the login. Oh, by the way, how can you access it? This is, again, it's already in your server. So you don't have to do anything with it already there. Uh, what you should do is that you just log in to the server by your phone. And you will be navigate into this special login screen. It's different from the login screen that you see in your desktop. Uh, here, actually, this is hidden, but it should have the drop down list that tell you which user interface you prefer the smartphone one or the basic one or desktop one if you choose the live uh, that is what we call for this uh, live web apps if you call the if you select the live and then you log in you will be welcomed by this screen this one the data entry is our aggregate area and the tracking is a tracking area we have the measures just uh, as the same in the, the smartphone interface. 
uh, we have reports where you can see your chart from yesterday. But it is this time, it's just the static chart. It's just no moving mark, mark at all because the limit of the technology. So if you go data entry, uh, just the same. You will go to organization unit selection. You will go to data set selection, period selection. You will have this uh, data entry screen. And you. we also try to do some basic validation here for you. Uh, data type validation and also some basic data validation, validation rule. And once you finish with a period and then you go back, you will see this green checkbox to indicate that you already report for it. Uh, just before I do the uh, demonstration, uh, I will sum up with this slide to tell you the pros and cons of application versus browser. In the application, for sure, you have the faster response always if you have the native JTMB application, if you have native Android application, one click and it's respond immediately. With the browser, you have to wait where to contact with the server. So it's a little bit lucky over there. The application is always better in low coverage because it is by far has the best offline capacity. It can catch everything inside the phone. Uh, the browser uh, don't have that fancy thing, or they have, but limited. But they similar to deploy because you don't have to ask the user to, to, to install anything, or you don't have to tell them to install. Yes installing an app in the Google Play Store is really simple, but for people who just, let's say, use their smartphones for the first time, it's still a problem. Uh, the application can use both SMS or GBRS as trans or 3G as transfer protocol. So you have a always have a backup mechanism. Uh, but the browser, you have to rely on 2G or 3G all the way. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, the browser also have more cap uh, compatibility across the handsets. This is somehow you can say it platform independence, because uh, as as far as I know, the the, the, the HTML is more standardized than uh, the JTML application. And finally, the application you less data traffic because. In our solution, we serialize all of your data, compress it, and then send it back and forth between the server and the client. So it sells you a lot of data you have to pay. Uh, OK, or not yet. Uh, now it's time that uh, I will do the demonstration. OK, I have with me here in the screen is the two applications from left to right. From the lab, it is the J2ME uh, aggregate reporting application. On the middle, this is the, the smartphone uh, web interface. And on the far right, this is the live application for uh, basic phone. So I will demonstrate uh, one by one. We will start with the J2ME application. And uh, as I say before, this is the main yeah, issue with uh, the, the, the J2ME. That is, each manufacturer implement J2ME by their own way. So in the screen, you can see that it looks like this, but on your J2ME, it can be look a little bit different. Uh, I log in with my username and password, and this is, again, this is the password that you can use in your desktop application. It's the same username and password. OK, and I'm now logged into the DSIS2 server. So uh, which group server is this? DSS2, which group server is this? Your, your server? OK, OK, OK. OK. 
I provide username and password. I lock it. Uh, now the application will ask me for the username uh, for the four-digit bin code. This bin code will be used from the next time you open the application. And if you forget this somehow, uh, don't worry. It, is, it has the initialize button that if you click on it, you will be navigated back into the login uh, log screen. So I will use a super simple pin code, which is 1234. I didn't encourage this. Don't use 1234 in your real production. This is just for testing. Okay, uh, then I will be navigate into select report form. Okay, you may wonder why you didn't see the organization unit select screen. Is it because this user is belong in only one organization unit? We try to sell for you every click. That is unnecessary click. We will try to sell it. So if it's just one option, there will be no screen to select. We will just move straight forward. And here I have three report forms. You will see that it is not totally correct with what you see in the desktop. Why? Because whatever happened here have, be, have to be defined in this module in the DSIS web. You go to maintenance, you go to mobile convey configuration, and you go to data set for mobile. There you have a list of data set in the left and a list of available data set for mobile in the right. The reason you have this is that in some area as we experience, people don't want the mobile user to enter data for everything because some form is very long, some form needs to be checked carefully in the CXC before it should be sent. So here you can limit what kind of form will appear in the J2ME uh, application and what will not. So if you send it, and this is exactly what you receive in the form. Uh, for example, I will try to enter a mortality less than five years for my area in January 2014. I select the period. Here I have the form. It looks similar to the default form of the DSS2. And uh, just to uh, notice that uh, the J2ME application only support for the default form and the section form. So that the custom form that you create with your HTML code cannot be supported here because it's have to this is a technical problem that we are in the boundary of the, 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 the hardware specification that we cannot extract the information from your custom form. So please not take that. Okay. Uh, the, the nice thing about this is that it has some data type limit. For example, this is the number data type. And no matter how I try, I cannot enter the character into this because it's already limit as number. Uh, one, uh, two, three, four, uh, two, one, something. I didn't enter all of them. Now, uh, when I press menu, I have three options. Whether I want to send it immediately to the server, or I am not very confident about my data, and I think I have to consider a little bit, I can choose self to sell in the database up the phone, or if by somehow I already know that I have no internet connection right now and the only way to send is to you send SMS, then I can choose send SMS. For example, I choose sell, okay, uh, I can close this, uh, yes. Now, for example, I already sell it into the phone and after I check, I quite confidence about it, my data, I go back. Here you can see in the January 2014, we have the small uh, this icon which indicate that the data for this period is already self. 
And if you open it, you can see your previous data. This is what we call offline capacity. It means that if you don't have network, no problem. Just save it, send it later. And now, after I check, okay, everything seems correct, even there are some few I don't have data. I just select send. Uh, the application will count the amount of empty place and warn me. You hey, you have seven few that is not few yet. Are you sure you want to send it anyway? Okay, I will do it anyway. Yes. Report upload successfully, and you receive response immediately. This is also what is called responsive. You don't have this kind of fancy if you use uh, the, the, the other solution. Uh, after I click done, I will get back to the screen if I want to send another report. Now let's just open that report again and see. Now that uh, small icon changed into a big green check. This means that already sent to the server. And now you can sleep very well because it makes sure that server receive it. Go back. Uh, here you have some order setting organization unit, but there's nothing to do there here because you only assign to one organization unit. You also have the settings over here where you can reset a little bit about several locations. But uh, basically, people shouldn't change their server URL because it will cause a lot of trouble. It's also, you can change your username and password over here, and you can enter a server phone number. This server phone number will be used for SMS reporting and change the locale. That's it, the first application. Uh, we move to the second. This is the smartphone application. As I say, you just access to DSS server using your uh, smartphone browser. It can be iPhone, it can be Windows phones, it can be Android. Just use server access to it, and you can see the user interface for this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's offer quite similar features as the J2ME application. Uh, first, you have aggregate reporting, and then you have yeah, this one is not in the J2ME. This one is messaging, uh, in that you can send a message to a group of uh, DSS user, and you have user account which is manage your account, and there's a, a, a status to indicate that if whether or not you have some pending data that is not uploaded to the server yet. Uh, you go to aggregate reporting over here. Here you have a big uh, list of organization unit because I log in as the admin administration. So they acquired a lot of organization unit over here. I can just select one. And here I also has a long list of uh, data set. Okay, assemble. Uh, so I can choose this uh, population yearly. I can enter for 2013, for example. So yeah. You can try in some number to test. It can also offer you some basic vali vali validation. Yeah, and you can you can choose either you send or you just send and complete. Um, because I'm no help person, so if I enter some of the very uh, true data over there, just remind me. So you can choose send and send it into the server. Very long. Uh, population, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, 
I just go back and check if the data we send from the mobile actually received by the server. So that now I go to the server, I go to data entry, I select the organization unit of the mobile user, which is this organization unit. I select the data set, which is this one, and period. Here you go. The data that you send from the mobile is now here. Just exactly the same as you send from the desktop application and or other way. Yep. Mm, where are we now? Okay. Just back. Because it's just the same, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Uh, the new thing is, is uh, messages. The the mic the my and there was a uh, two buttons there send and below that send and complete what's the difference? Uh, there this is the uh, uh, mechanism of the DSIS two itself. The, the the complete as you learned from the previous section. This is to confirm that you now submit the, the, the data and this is now valid. If you just uh, send, it means that your the, the data for that period will be few, but it will not indicate a complete. And if you press the send and complete, it will be few and also mark a complete. Is that clear? Yeah, okay. So it's it's the same <laughs> feature as in the normal data entry form. Okay, the messenger. Uh, we didn't talk about the messenger yet, but basically this is the... Uh, Long, I think we have another question. Okay. Sorry, just real quick. Uh, when you access an org unit, I noticed you can only access the second level. Um, can you go lower than that at all? Like you have the top, like your country, your route, and then you just have the second level underneath. But can you access like the district or the uh, facility? Because we cannot control how many level it can be. So for example, uh, Sierra Leone, it can be 100 of organization unit inside there. So that we cannot list all of them, it will be 1,000 organization units. And you just imagine how you can to that. So actually, ideally, we will first, the top priority that is we list all the organization unit that you belong to. That is top priority. And we will try to list some more under that. But and uh, just to, 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 to say it again, this mobile application is ongoing develop, development. And we are increased almost every day. So all of your idea, all of your feedback is welcome to, 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 to the team. So that if you have any feedback or you have a suggest, yeah, just tell it. We all. Um, I get back to the message. Uh, this is a kind of the built-in messaging system in DSS2, where it helps people that are using DSS2 can communicate to each other. You can compose a message send it into the community and when you log in it in uh, when you log in into your dashboard you can see it and now we bring it into the mobile interface it means that you can use the mobile interface to interact with people who use the desktop uh, version uh, here in the screen you can see there are some meshes that is labeled as white and message labeled a blue the which one is uh, label is wise mean that uh, you already read it and the blue one is the new one you didn't read it yet so uh, let's click on one message for example mortality data reporting this one is sent by John Treo and he asked some question about this and what you can do is you can actually reply into it uh, Yes, uh, I know. 
for example, you reply. And yeah, sorry, because I'm using the same user. Um, I am John <laughs> Tero, uh, but I will show you in the dashboard. Mm, where is my dashboard? Uh, yeah. For unread matches, if you open this, you can actually see that there's a message that you had just sent from the mobile. So this is sm small features. But I think it will create a great, great impact so everyone can communicate to the community. Okay, and uh, just back, uh, back. User account, it is the place for you to change your uh, profile information. Like Christine introduced, there you actually have the profiles over here. You have the uh, introduction, you have job, you have employer education, even your interest and your language. Everything here you can change it over here. And of course you can change it using the desktop application. Yep. That's it. That is the smartphone interface. Now we move to the feature phone user interface. Uh, I would say that this is the basic interface, but it offers a lot of features over here. It supports completely for the aggregate report data entering, the tracking, the matches, and you can see some of your reports in it. Uh, I will just go to the aggregate reporting, but I won't go very detailed into it. Because basically, the process is the same across all of the client. This is straightforward, the same. If you know how to use one application, you can easily use another. So just select your org unit, select your data set, select your period, and you are good to go. Yeah, this is the uh, how the forms look like in the basic phone user interface. So if you have the Nokia one or something, you can just try it. Yeah. Uh, this is a tracking. Uh, I just go through it. Uh, the tracker offer you some feature like you can find or add a person. You can have the V6 schedule. You can have person registration and anonymous program. But all of these I will introduce in another day. But just know that this is here available for you. The meshes. Uh, very much the same as the smartphone interface. You also have uh, a list of uh, messages from other people. You can click into it to see the detail. You can reply, or you can just compose a new message and send it to everyone. I can just combo and say hello, oh sorry, hello academy 2014, okay. Oh, I think that I reply into something, not that, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go next to the reports. Uh, in this one, if you go for uh, to report and you go to the charts, 
you will see there is a long list of charts that you can click and view on your mobile phone. For example, I can just click on this. So this is actually the chart that some of you made yesterday. So now you can view it in your phone. And you can also, this is basically this is the, 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 the status image. So if you want, you can download it also. Okay. The document. No, we didn't have any document yet, and report we also didn't have yet. So that is basically the functionalities and the advantage and disadvantages of our current mobile solution. So do you have any question? Once, once more, please. Are validation rules available for J2ME forms? Uh, unfortunately, the validation rule did not apply for the J2ME yet. We have validation for the data type, but not the validation rule. Because that, we have to contact with the server to check for the validation rules, and it will break the offline capacity. Okay. Um, what what technology it's using for saving data on mobile phone, both on Android, Android and J2ME? Uh, uh, the both the Android and the J2ME offer. Sorry. Uh, uh, both the the Android and the J2ME offer the built-in built-in database for the and uh, for the J2ME is called Record Store. Yeah. And you can sell basic yeah. data into it. It's not that fancy. Uh, what? You can find in Postgres or MySQL, but it still help you to sell the data as binary code inside, yeah. and you can retrieve it back and reconstruct the object. Can we uh, export this data as text file, and then um, text file could be uh, transferred to PC using uh, USB cable, and then we can import that data into uh, DHIS? Is it possible? Uh, for the Android, right now, we don't have that yet. But for the, the, the uh, J2ME application, when you select send SMS, actually uh, the, the, the application will generate for you an XML with, this is a text XML, people readable, you can read it actually, uh, with the code and the yeah. value. So if you have that uh, requirement, we can just take the, 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 the forms that you want and we can just uh, generate the value accordingly. So uh, our mobile applications also provide offline data. But for example, if a user has entered a lot of data and then someone has changed, um, someone has changed forms on the uh, server and ha have added fields or edited some fields, then what would happen? How would it synchronize with the older forms and newer forms? Uh, the J2 application have the mechanism of checking with the server every time you 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 open it. Actually, every time you open, you see the pin lock screen. The pin lock screen with four digit. Yeah. After you enter that four digit and you click next, it will perform a check with the server. But if if it can reach there, yeah. it will connect with the server and try to download all the metadata, the up to date metadata from the server and store it locally. If it cannot. It just silently fell. Then what would happen with the existing forms on mobile application? For example, we have filled uh, data for first six months on for a form. Let's because say. because the data values are actually independent with the data element. I mean, you, you, you already learned about the three dimension, yeah. what, and I mean, right. all dimension that John talked to you. So that if you add new data element into your form, it will not affect into the current data value inside the the the, 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 okay. the, the phone. Another uh, question was: um, uh, Is data encrypted? Um, yes, because as I say, the J two M is actually compress the data. W uh, we use the the library called JZLIF, 
JZ library yeah. that actually we compress the data before we send back and forth between the server. After you enter the data, all of the thing will be serialized. First, it, it will be serialized, then it will be compressed, and then it's sent. In the server, it will be decompressed, deserialized, pre-construct the object, try to run all of the validation over there, and then finally import into the, 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 the database. So the answer should be yes. Uh, one more question. Yes. Is there any uh, feature available that um, user can send a text message like we send to our um, mobile uh, network provider, like info or something like this, and um, and write the report name, and then and then the server sends a message with the report variables back <laughs> to the user, and then we can just fill in the values and submit data back to the server. So because it's it's impossible to train users to fill correct data, so that's the you mean that you use the plan test FNS to report to the server, right? Yeah. Because okay. on, uh, on that very low end phones, yes, uh, I think. That, so that will be the next topic, the third area that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just checking with the with the last um, with the last question because I, th I think there are two possibilities. Um, so I don't know exactly which one you meant because one possibility which which uh, Long is going to show us now with a plain SMS. That's that's one possibility, and the other possibility is is what we call USSD, which is this thing where you're actually in a dialogue. For example, if you want to require about your uh, your balance on your account. You send a code like like uh, star one two three hash or something like that, and you get a reply back. And it's possible to use that. That's called USSD, and it's it's possible to use that technology to sort of the have the server send you one question, then you reply, and then send the next question, you reply. Um, this technology is. M Quite different, and it's and it's, but it has been used a little bit in in Tanzania, but um, but it's not really the standard option I'm that we offer. I'm, go I'm going to talk about that uh, later today. Very good. Uh, now we continue to the third area that I have just mentioned in the beginning. Uh, this area, the area where you have just the black and white phone, and it's support noting, but calling, receiving call, and SMS. So what, what have we do with it? Uh, what we do is that uh, we create the SMS reporting support for uh, DHIS2. Uh, even that the user use their own phone to 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 sending to send the SMS to the SS2 server, uh, but most of the thing that we done in terms of technical is happen in the server side. So the SMS module in the SS2 provide the SMS service for the whole the SS2, not the mobile. For example, uh, when you track. A woman to our ANC program after they fi she she finished a stage, you can send a reminder SMS automatically uh, when she come to the, the the health facility, for example. Or <coughs> you can send notification from the SS2 to a group of user by your choice, uh, just to inform them to come for the meeting or to alert about uh, outbreak disease. Uh, and also, it's also receive the provide service to receive SMS from the user uh, when they send the reporting or they send the alert to the user group inside the SS. Uh, it's support for aggregate reporting. It's support for alert messaging, and the most beautiful thing is, of course, it work on any phone. It's very basic thing. Uh, support everything. So you want to talk about this? Yeah. So this is this is the um, 
Um, one of the uh, deployments that Kristen was talking about uh, earlier, um, where they send in list, uh, it's about um, preventing trans transmission of uh, HIV from mother to child. And the facilities send in um, some key indicators over SMS so that this program can be tracked. Um, it's Stuff like uh, if there if there's ARVs available, if there are HIV kits available, uh, which is extremely important information, obviously f to get um, timely. Th this is information that's relevant exactly when it's being sent. So what we do then is that we have a, a form for each of the um, each of the data value. We assign a code. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, for example. It can be anything. And then we have a value. And we, we compose a message with a keyword, a command, and then key, value, key, value, key, value, key, value, etc. Um, if you only have numbers, you can use space. If you, if you want to have... Uh, yes and no, we need to put a delimiter, which in this case is a period between the keys and the values. So in this way, this form can be reported by this text message. It's um, a slightly cumbersome process because you have to be very precise when you, when you type. But still, this, this works on any phone, which means that you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to hand out phones to the health workers. So it's cheap. Um, I just want to show you um, the training slides we had. We did a, we, we're doing a pilot in, um, in Nigeria on, um, together with the Clinton Health Access Initiative, where we're tracking um, medicines, HIV kits, etc., uh, if they have stockouts. So when they if, they if they have run out of, uh, of commodities over the last month. So this is basically, this is one of the uh, facilities that's reporting. No electricity, absolutely no internet. Um, there's one generator in the village, so uh, the person who runs the facility can charge her phone once or twice a week. Um, and this is, her, um, this is her pharmacy. So every month she will send an SMS if she has had stockouts of the important, uh, important medicines that she's supposed to have. So, <coughs> this in, in Nigeria, they actually have a form uh, that every single health facility in the whole country sends in, which includes stockouts. We were, we were lucky enough to be able to, to get this into the, uh, to the main reporting form um, when that was changed last year. So, this is the stockout. Um, part of it, it's, I was wrong, it's 24, 25, 25 different uh, commodities that, that they are tracking. Right. So to get the data quality, what we're asking them to do is to do their paperwork first. So they fill out their form with what they have had stock out of. And then they have to create the message. So in this message, there's always a code word, a command. In this case, it's STCK. And then they take the number, so we're reusing the number on the form. Very important thing, because we don't want, we want, we want it as simple as possible, and here we actually have an indica have a, um, a name for the, uh, uh, for the value. So they put that here with an S in front, S209. Yes, Y means yes, N means no. Simple rule, and you put between the codes and the values, you put a period. So then they type in these 25 values with, um, with, um, so with the codes and, and the values. Takes them about, when we did the training, it took them about 10 minutes. So third step, review it. So you read through it and make sure it makes sense. Um, and send it, and you get a response. And then 
in that response, it tells you which wa values you have um, sent and, or which values has been, have been received. So you check it. You check it for errors. So you see, ah, oh, I forgot 217. Uh, oops, I, have, I had some problems here. So these are, these are obviously wrong. So you see that there are things that you have to correct. And then you send it, you receive a new confirmation, you check it again. So yes, the process is more cumbersome, absolutely. But everyone can use it, every single person on any phone, and everyone has a phone. So this is the way that we think we can reach those uh, hard to get to facilities, get them to report, and they are, uh, when we did this training for, for these people in, in Nigeria, they were ecstatic. This for them was a, a, they were so proud of being part of a pilot that could change the way uh, the health system in Nigeria worked. They thought it was a great step forward to be, um, to be heard, to be able to report directly. So the, the paper forms goes to the local government and someone sits and types it in and creates a bar barrier between them and the information. But now they can put it in directly. And they were very, very enthusiastic. And this is basically what we gave them when they, when they left, the five steps. So they need this, they need their phone, and they're good to go. Right, Long, can you show us the magic? Okay, uh, and let us just show you that uh, this is the example of uh, what kind of form that uh, we use in uh, our previous research. And now I will show you actually how you can step by step actually how you can set up the SMS service for the SS2 server. And uh, pay attention now because you have to do this later in your assignment uh, this afternoon. Well, I just uh, use one of our local server here, the, the SS2. I log in as an admin. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm going to edit that. OK. Um, the first thing you will need for uh, SMS to work, this is the gateway. Gateway is the name Im imply. This is where you send and you receive messages. And we support quite multiple way for you to set up the gateway. First, you go to maintenance. Every setting here is, um, I mean, every de de uh, the define in the DSS2 go to maintenance. You go to mobile configuration. And then you go to SMS service configuration. This is where you set it up. Here I already set it up one. And please note that, that this is one time jobs. You just set up it one time. And from that, after that, you can just use it. You don't have to touch anything if you don't change your gateway. So here I have a big green box indicate what is the status of my gateway. If it say it started, it means that this is UFI. You should now be able to sending and receiving uh, SMS. If, OK, I will just stop it. And maybe we can start it. Um, If we s you see something like this, it means that you have no gateway yet. And you have to start configuration one. To do it, you go to add gateway. Uh, here, you have several gateway types. You can have bugs at a mat and click to tell which are the two SMS service from the outside. It means that you can buy an account from, from them. And then they will provide for you the username and password and some additional information. And you will use that additional information in order to send the, 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 the SMS. It means that you give the order to send SMS from this S2 to their server. And the actual SMS will be sent from their server. This is how it works. We also have generic HTTP gateway. Any SMS provider should have this, uh, should support this kind of uh, gateway. They will just provide you the, um, look like the hyperlink <coughs> with some of the configurable 
parameter, you can just provide a, the, the required parameter and this one can work. The modem gateway, we also support the physical modem. That is, you plug it, you can even use your cell phone as a modem to send and receive SMS. But we s didn't recommend this as a production service because we used to have a band phone experience in India before. In India, they have 6,000 people report with SMS, and we have a server with a physical modem. As you know, all of the data sets has a period. It means that in the first 29 days of the month, there's nothing happen. Suddenly, at the deadline, 6,000 SMS come at the same time. And as the result, the physical modem cannot handle that. It stopped working. And in India, actually, they can hire one people just to sit in front of the server to do one job that is restart the modem. That is the band phone story, and we will never ever repeat it again. So we strongly recommend that you modem gateway for testing purpose only. Uh, the last thing is you have SMPP gateway. This is a kind of the advanced gateway, and you really come close to the network provider, and they very strict in provide this kind of gateway, unless you have a huge amount of customer and you send and receive a huge amount of SMS uh, every month. So now I will conflict the clicker tail gateway, uh, which is, um, I already have an account. Uh, now I have to get my account in the Google Keep. So just close your eye, because it's a password. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yes. Um, actually, I'm not very sure because they they sell it by credit. Uh, you can uh, you you can register one account for free, and you have ten credit for free. But after that, they will have the package. For example, uh, five hundred uh, SMS messages, one thousand SMS messages, and yeah. Oh, oh, it's off by Google Keep. And while, while he does this, this uh, you will not need to do this part in your assignment because we're using uh, Long's account for this. So we have already provisioned that on all the servers. So you don't need to remember his password. <laughs> 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 OK, I sell the settings. Just wait. OK, a big success screen up here. Uh, just tell me that I already setting up it, but we will check a little bit. Okay, bingo. We have SMS services started, but I don't trust it, so I will do a small test over here. I will go to service. I go to SMS. This is where you actually send. You can send a message from here. Here you have multiple way to send your message. You can send the SMS by just tying a phone number. You can choose a user group. It means that you group uh, some user into a group, and then you send to all of them. You can send to an organization unit. All people belong to one organization unit, or you can send to organization unit phone number. It depends. Here I will send it to raw phone number. Can I have the phone number of any of you here? Can I have? I will try to send a test SMS. My all? It's not very fair and interesting. OK, anyway. Your phone number. Uh, this is Vietnamese phone number or? OK. Uh, tell me if I tried it wrong. Uh, I and the uh, and Blin most is that the phone number has to start with the country code, but without a plus. Please notice because this is very important. One, two, three, eight, four, eight, and six, 
9-1-1. Okay. Hello from the SIS to Academy. Okay, I hope that the phone number is correct and you can receive it. Did you receive anything? Not yet. Okay. It didn't come in here, right? It comes into the inbox, yes. It should come to the inbox. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come on. Yeah, 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 coming here. What is Yes. What did it say? Yeah. It said, <laughs> hello, DSS2. Okay. Academy, yeah. Good. So now we are sure that it's work. And we have never touched your phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> just another notice. Uh, we are facing some situation that people asking why I only need to receive receiving SMS, but I also have to configure a running SMS sending gateway. The reason is that even that you just want to receive the SMS, but after you receive that, if something happened, the system has to send back to the user something, saying, okay, this command is not exist. Uh, sorry, you are reporting wrong information. So we always need a two-way working gateway, sending and receiving. And also, the receiving uh, service is depend on the whole service SMS service, so make sure that this is this banner is green all the time if you want to send in a receiving message. Now you have just done the first step, you already have a working gateway. The next step is to configure a, a command for your data set. Just assume that you want a user to report uh, the data using uh, plan test at MS. Uh, just the same, go to maintain and go to mobile configuration. And on the left, on the bottom, you have SMS commands. Click on it. You can see that here, I already have a command, but I will just delete it. You can click here to create new command. Uh, first, you give a name, for example, because I'm going to do the uh, command for the mortality data set, so I will call it mortality. This command name is very important. This will serve as a keyword for the SMS, so make sure that this is short, meaningful, and easy to remember. Then you choose the chi up the boxer. Chi up boxer actually means chi up the command. In the SS2, we support key value boxer, it means that the data set reporting. You have J2ME boxer, this is for the J2ME, you don't have to remember this now. The alert boxer, using for alert message sending. Unregistered boxer using for receiving message from the user that is not registered in the SIS yet. And the anonymous one is currently in development. So in this case, we select the key value parser. Then you select the data set. Here I will select the mortality less than five years data set. And then I create self. But we are not done yet. We have to go to edit, open it, and now you have another screen. Which is, if you look at the second section here, you can see that we list all of the data elements in your data set. So basic, basically, it's very simple. What we are trying to do is that, because you can see the phone name in the left is way too long for people to remember and actually typing into their, 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 their phone and or their SMS. So we try to map that data element with a single symbol characteristic like A, B, C, or D. And that is much more easier to understand. And then when they com combine, they just remember the code, not the, the real name of the data element. Uh, on the top, 
you again you see the name of the command that can serve as a keyword, the Braxo type, the data set. Use current period for reporting. If you make the checkbox, this is this Monday, February. So if you check this, uh, the, 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 the checkbox, the, 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 the data will be sent and register as the data of February. If you don't check, this will be the data of January. Clock and value separator. Uh, if in your form you have data element with multiple data type, it's a miss between the text, uh, two phone value, then you have to use the, cox, uh, the, the the separator just to separate everything and not confuse the system. Re reply message is no code uh, are sent. Uh, sometimes people make some mistake that they send an empty message with just the code, uh, the, the command name only. So you can custom some message over here. If not, uh, the system will reply with the default message which it tell you that this is just empty command. So I will play the rest on top here blank. What I will do is I will assign the code for each of the data element. A, okay, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Okay. And uh, note that in some cases you might want to provide some of the uh, data elements with a with a code and not all. So you might want to use SMS reporting only for some parts of uh, of a data set. Oh, uh, this special characters and value is it because sometimes you have some values that is too long. For example, if you notice there's some drop down list that can choose for example the blood pressure for something shoot the blood, pre blood pressure it's, it's not very real but sometimes the data value too long and you can one map that value into something shorter you can use this function but now we don't have it or we don't need because this is we trying to do a simple demo so now basically you are done with the oh someone actually doing it so I have a lot here uh, so basically, uh, we just done with the first step. Uh, let me check. Oh, this is empty. Back. Delete. So my motility is here. Okay. So you done with the second step, uh, which is setting up SMS command. A um, uh, question here. Um, I was noticing when I tried to set up the data set. I was using a data element yes. measles that had a category combination yeah. of true, you know, true. a lot. Yeah. Do I and I wouldn't want to collect all of that those yeah. I guess dimensions <laughs> yeah. up. So can I do I have to create a new data element or can I turn off the category combination? No, you you don't have to turn off. You know that when you have category combination, it will combine all of the things inside and provide you with more fuse than the amount, uh, actual amount of data element. What we did is that, I will just turn back and I'll show you. Now, if you notice, there's say default. This means that it's actually using the default category option combo. But if you don't have the default and you have something else, it will try to make that com combination for you and try to generate all of the possible combination and list is vertically. Uh, so if you just want sum of them, just play it blank. I mean, don't assign the, the, the command for it. Oh. Just play it blank, don't assign. And it will just work very fine. Okay, we done the second second step. Okay, uh, that is we done the second step. But uh, how the user send the SMS? This is a super simple assemble. The first part, 
will be the component name. It can be that a command name that we should just define. It's not a sample. We type the command name, a space, and then following with the code, next to it, the value. This is a very simple example because we didn't, we, I, I, I even don't use the separator. So the code, the value, space, the code, and the value again. It just continue like that. And when you say this will work normally, nicely. <laughs>